Hi, I'm Mike, and have you ever wondered how to draw shapes in your shaders? Truthfully, this is something that I had never considered before, uh, at least not until I got a question uh, on a comment from my previous video about the depth buffer. And they ask, how do I set it so that instead of drawing a circle, I draw a rectangle? I was thinking of using your idea, but as lights underneath my vehicle. And I thought this was an interesting question, so I did a little bit of digging and found an answer. Let me introduce you to the idea of sign distance fields or sign distance functions, which are equations or algorithms that basically let you draw shapes using math. Before you click off this video, I'm not going to be going into the math. Uh, if you are interested in that, there's a great video by Inigo Quilez, who does some amazing things with math and shaders uh, that I will link to at the end. If you are still interested in learning more about that, but the goal of this video is just to give you a primer on what uh, sign distance fields or sign distance functions are and how to implement them into your shaders. So I've said sign distance fields and sign distance functions a couple of times in this video already, so I think it's about time that we get into what they actually are. So to distill it down to its core, it is basically a way of defining a shape in space that is just different from the way that we usually do it in game development. Usually in game development, we define the position of things by where they are. For example, if we want to uh, define a cube, we just have to add eight vertices, fill in the faces, and there we have a cube. Though more realistically, you just have to open up Blender and there's your cube. But however we get there, we have defined this cube by where these points are in space. So instead of defining things by where they are, we can also define them by where they aren't, which is kind of what sign distance fields do. Let, let's see if I can explain this a little bit better with a physical example. Let's take this cube here and go through these steps again. So if we define the cube by where it is, we would let the computer know where each of the corners are in space. The other way to do it is imagine there's a point here in space away from the cube. Now, if we take the distance that point is from the cube, and we do this a bunch of times all the way around the cube to define a field around the cube, a distance field as it were, we can use that to define the shape of the cube as well. So that's the distance field part of sign distance field. And the signed part is that any point that is outside of the cube is a positive value and any point that is inside of the cube is a negative value. And in a sign distance field, all of the points are measured from the closest part of the shape to that point. And the sign distance function is just a way to measure what the sign distance field is at that point. So now that you have an idea of what sign distance fields or sign distance functions are, let's move into how to implement them into your own shaders. And the functions that we'll be using in the rest of this video are basically just that. They are functions that will return a positive or negative distance to the nearest point of the shape. I want to credit Inigo Quilez at this point because on his website, he has a ton of basic shapes already defined as uh, functions that we can just plug and play into our shader. Uh, so I'll leave a link to his website down below where you can find these functions if you want to play with them yourself. And with that said, let's hop into Godot so I can show you how to integrate them into your shaders. So this is the scene that we're going to be working with today. Some of you may recognize this from the previous video that I've done on the depth buffer shader, where I created a sci-fi glowing pulse. And so this scene is technically not that scene. Um, I have made a copy of it here, just so we can start messing around with some settings without breaking the previous scene that I have set up. So just to show you how it works. We can see that the objects in the middle are spinning around and the sphere is the origin point for the shader pulse. So if I hit spacebar, the pulse will move out in a sphere from the origin point. Now the question is, can we make this into a shape other than the sphere? Let's go about implementing that into the shader. All right, first things first, let's get to the shader that we're using that I'm going to be making changes to. So this shader, if you have seen that previous video, is going to be slightly different because I did make some tweaks and clarifications before uploading it to Godot shaders. But in general, it's roughly the same. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to replace this line here, this uh, this distance function call with the signed distance field or function for the rounded box. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to go over to Inigo Quilez's website and then find our way to the distance functions, uh, which I will have linked down below in the description. Uh, we're just going to be working with the round box. So we'll grab this, copy, go back to Godot, and we'll paste it in. 
Uh, one thing to note, and I'll show you as an example, if we add it below the, the fragment function and then we try to call it before we define that function, it's not going to work. It's not going to find it. So we can see here, we now get the error, no matching function found. And that's because we have defined the function below where we're trying to use it. And the simple way to fix this is to define the function before we try to use it. So I'm just gonna put it up here. Now in some languages, you're allowed to uh, define the signature for the function before defining the function itself. Uh, that doesn't appear to be the case in um, the shader language here. So if we take a look at the scene again, we can now see that there's already a glowing box shape in the middle of the scene. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to think about how we want to be using this in the game. In this case, because we want to have it mimic uh, glow underneath a vehicle, we're going to want to be able to transform this box's location based on the car. If we take a look at some of our uniforms here, we're not going to want a start point in this case because it's going to be following both the position and the rotation of the object. So instead of just getting the vector three, we're going to want to get the entire uh, transform matrix, which will be a map four. So if we replace this with a uniform map four, and we'll call it shape transform. Uh, and then we'll give it a default value. Um, in this case, in order to get the, the identity matrix, uh, it'll be map four 1.0. And that's as per the documentation for Godot's shader language. Uh, the other thing we're going to want to change is that radius is no longer going to be applicable because it's not a sphere, but we will want to be able to scale the size. So we'll just change that to size. We're also going to be, want to be able to set the dimensions of the box. So we'll grab another vector three, set the default to 1.0, and then another variable that we want to be able to control the roundness of the edges. This time it'll be just a float value. We'll set that to 0.5 as default. And I believe that's it for the information that we're going to need to get from an outside source. So now let's actually implement those in, in the code. So down here, where we call the round box, instead of just the hard-coded vector, three, we'll change that to the dimensions, or box dimensions. And instead of the 0.5, we'll change that to the radius, or the, yeah, radius. Um, second guessing this, we'll rename it to roundness. Uh, and then finally, now that we've gotten rid of the radius here, our distance function has broken. So instead of if the distance is less than the radius, because of the way the sign distance function works, if the value returned is less than zero, that means that it is inside the box. If it's greater than zero, it'll be outside of the box. So if we want to have it right against the edge of the box, we can do distance is less than zero or less than or equal to zero. Uh, and then we want it to stop drawing if, if the distance has gotten to the pulse width that we've defined in our variable. So if it's greater than the negative value of the pulse width. Uh, and then there's a bit of a mistake in the previous shader where setting the size of the pulse width it doesn't really change the gradient fall off so instead we can get a percentage so float and then instead of one minus that we're going to do one minus percentage uh, and there we go if we look at the box now we can see that it's much much more filled in than it was uh, and just to show you how this works, now if we change the pulse width, the gradient remains fairly. So now, the last thing that we're going to want to do is because we have a size adjustment, we're gonna just multiply this by the size and we're going to multiply the roundness by the size as well to keep the everything scaling in a consistent way. Uh, and then we can see it's disappeared because the size is currently set to zero. But if we increase this back to one, we're back at where we were but we can see it now able to scale nicely. Now, the next thing that we're going to want to do is we want to be able to adjust 
the transformation of it to move the box around in space. So one of the interesting quirks about using sign distance functions is that if you want to translate it in space, you need to apply the inverse of the translation that you want. Uh, and that's easy enough to do in code, uh, in Godot's shader language anyway. So what we can do here is if we want it to be in the adjusted position will be a vector three. Uh, we're going to want to take the inverse of the uh, shape transform matrix. We want to multiply it with a vector four of the world position and we'll add a 1.0 to the end. Uh, and then we want to take the X, Y, Z component of all of that. Uh, and then instead of getting the world position, we'll want to do the adjusted. Okay, uh, and then what we're going to need to do now is we need to get into the GD script and we need to be able to pass this information to the shader. Now we no longer have a start point. We're going to need to change this to shape transform. Uh, and because it's the entire transform matrix that we're getting, we no longer need to just get the origin point, we can get the entire global transform. If we wanted to follow our object around the scene, we're going to need to be updating this every time it's drawn. That's it, I think. So from here, what do we want to do? Uh, in order to kind of better demonstrate how this works, let us, instead of having the pulse origin be a sphere, we'll adjust it into a cube. That's how we use the sign distance functions within our shader. Hopefully now you have an idea of how sign distance functions work and how to implement them into your own shader code. If you've made it this far in the video, it would be a great help to the channel if you could just leave a like and or a comment down below and consider subscribing if you'd like to hear more from me. But that's it for me for today, so take care of yourselves and good luck on your projects. Thank you.